Welcome, welcome, welcome to Milking the Franchise, the Cash Cow Chronicles. Uh, Where we watch is... movies. Oh, we do. We watch movies. Yeah, baby. Get that third cow pun in there. We need a ball. Uh, I always forget. Yeah, it won't fit in any of the um, things online for for a podcast. So okay. I forget to say it. No, no worries. They only allow I'm just, 80 I'm just letters. Hoarding. I think we just need to hoard puns. We just they only they only allow fifty characters for <laughs> titles, unfortunately. Um, yeah, welcome to the podcast. My name is Tanner. I'm Chris. Uh, we watch Hi, movies Tanner. and franchises. Mm-hmm. Hi, Chris. Welcome. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, welcome. How to are you too. today? How are you? Doing today? great. Doing great. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful sunny Fantastic. day. Um, oh, lucky. Yeah. How how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Seattle has uh, experienced a bit of a cold spell, or like it just got super cloudy and dreary overnight from like a nice 80 degree summer. Oh uh, yeah. So you know how it is. The ups and downs of of the Northwest. Yeah. Um, but overall good because I just watched Highlander. What's that? Oh, absolutely. And I was going to say, speaking of ups and downs, um, I just ate a whole bowl of Kellogg's. Hershey's cookies and cream cereal. So I might be getting up uh, to 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 go throw up at some point during the recording today. Just a fair warning. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll uh, we'll make sure to mark the spot and edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> Take us with you. Do you want, you want me to bring the recording into the bathroom if I have to if I have to retch? <laughs> Please no. Please no. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, uh, yeah. What what is this show? What are we what are we doing here, Tanner? You tell me. I I don't know. I may have just derailed the entire podcast already by choosing this franchise. Oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> uh I I I mean I was super into this movie. We'll we'll get into sure. that in a minute though. Uh but in this franchise or in this uh this show, uh Tanner and I pick a movie franchise and we watch uh each of the movies in that franchise. Um and and usually the franchise uh, starts out pretty strong and kind of devolves into madness. And that's certainly what we saw um, with our last franchise, Jaws, uh, Jaws 4. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we picked a new movie franchise to start today. And so we're going to be talking about the first episode of uh, or first uh, installment of the Highlander series. Um, but before we get to that, I think we have a little bit of cleanup uh, to do on the Jaws franchise. Is that right? A little bit of cleanup. Um, I will. I just want to say the Highlander is more of a. It's definitely a, a milked franchise. I'm not so mm-hmm. sure it's a cash cow, which I was one. I was like, oh, is this going to be right? But I'm. I'm very glad to hear that you're into it. Um, I mean, it and... was time travel and sword fighting. It was <laughs> fucking dope. I'm really excited <laughs> to talk to you about it. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about last week's survey. So we released surveys, um, based on every movie and try to get people to write and, um, play along, fill out funny prompts and we will read them on the show. Um, so last week, as Chris mentioned, we watched Jaws, the revenge, which is the fourth and final Jaws movie. Um, Mm -hmm. and by far the worst one and a complete franchise killer. There has been yes. nothing made in 37 years, 36 years. Um, and except except in. for video games and board games and stuff. It's not nothing, yeah. but they have stopped making movies and, and film stuff. And Jaws yeah. has been re-released in theaters. Like the movie holds up. The original still holds up for sure. Yes. Um, but let's get into it. Our favorite line of the movie was, I've always wanted to make love to an angry welder. I've <laughs> dreamed of nothing else since I was a small boy. Uh, I'm just what a weird there. thing to say. What a, someone wrote that down <laughs> and it made it through revisions into this movie. I'm assuming I, those revisions, or maybe they just winged it. They could have just made it up on the spot. Yeah, I did. wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that it was the only take that they took. Um, next question was most confusing aspect of Jaws: The Revenge, um, which was. Ellen having a shark sense and feeling Jaws attacks. Um, yeah. The movie featured the original wife from the first Jaws movie and the shark being was tracking them down and following them to the Caribbean and attacking and killing her family. And she could sense it 
mm -hmm. right? Oh, yes. It was like visceral reaction she had each time. Super stupid. Um, next question was, should Jake have died? Uh, full yes. Um, so they, <laughs> at the end, one of the characters gets fully eaten by Jaws. And at the very last second, they just show him swimming and he's okay. Uh, which was, I think, edited in later for a TV version or for like a reshoot or something. Um, and he was supposed to die, but they made him live. And it's so stupid. It's really Such bad. a cop out. Such yeah. a cop out. I mean, yeah. you want that emotional piece there. Um, right. Not that it would have saved the movie. Um, but it just felt, it felt like a cop out to let him live because they used his death as like an emotional moment. Totally. So it, it's and then you go back against it's just so unearned, you know. It makes no sense. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah. Um, the next question: <laughs> What are sharks attracted to? Um, in this movie, the only thing they know for sure, besides the Brody family, is the electromagnetic impulses of the metal on the plane. Yep, they made uh, sure to call that out. <laughs> there was no other option for that question. Um, uh, this movie featured Michael Caine as a pilot named Hoagie. Uh, so we asked you, besides Hoagie, what is your sandwich-based nickname? We got Po' Boy. Ooh, uh, nice. Sandy, because fuck Cindy. <laughs> and it's short for Sandwich. <laughs> that's a callback to just three a little uh, callback to just 3d you know these jokes are for the fans all right these surveys are for the fans you got um, a, you got a belly laugh out of me yeah <laughs> um and then we got blimpy because of blimpy subs and it's also a flying uh thing uh, oh that would have been a way better name than hoagie hoagie honestly Blimpy, yeah. Blimpy, yeah. Blimpy subs. Um, and then Ruben, of course. And the Jared. <laughs> good, 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 good. Uh, I'm not going to go into why that's funny. but um... I'm not going to touch that one either. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not what he said. <laughs> oh. Hey-o. hey Um. <laughs> so the next question moving on from that next question coming up come up with a before, name for before we lose our sponsorship with subway yeah we better move on it's all right they got steph curry now um, oh that's true uh so we asked you to come up with a name for carla brody's art sculpture this was the son's wife was an artist and she was welding the angry welder herself uh mm -hmm. and it just is like this Kind of ugly, just pointless art sculpture that they feature a lot in the movie. Um, I think the word jumble describes it to me. Jumble? Yeah, yeah it's just a jumble it's, of metal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of those um, art sculptures you'll see around cities. Um, mm -hmm. And they are revealing it on the beach, and we asked you to name it. So we got impending lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia O'Keeffe's vagina. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> white privilege uh, okay yeah <laughs> well you know they were like this rich white family on this caribbean island and she's yeah. getting the art she's doing the art for it and they they think they're all so special i feel they, like and it is like, being like revealed by a bunch of black people yeah i mean yeah it's just a mm -hmm. weird i don't know it's a weird dynamic yeah weird dynamic there what are they doing there um <clears throat> And then we asked you to rate Jaws the Revenge. Um, we got a one and a three. I don't remember what, what was the it? scale was on that. I don't remember either. I would have put it lower if it wasn't a funny scale. But um, Let's see. It was Revenge Served Hot or Revenge Served mm. Old. I, that's right. I put it right in the middle because this movie is not hot, nor is it cool. It's pretty mediocre. Oh, it's Luke. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah lukewarm. It's lukewarm. Um, <clears throat> quickly, we'll just go through the recap of the Jaws franchise questions. Favorite movie was definitely the first one. Um, yep. Favorite character, we got a split between Jaws and Roy Scheider's character, Brody. Um, yep. Favorite Jaws villain. So each one kind of featured a different dynamic to Jaws. The second one had, it had scars on it, which makes it scarier, obviously. Uh, the third one, it was in 3D, so it's a 3D shark, and then the revenge shark. 
It mm-hmm. has a revenge. Um, and that was kind of split. And then we like to talk about the milk of the franchise, as we call it. Um, other IP and things that um, gets milked from the IP. Mm-hmm. And the favorite milk that we discussed was video game, type for video games and the book that Chris read, Jaws itself. Yeah. Um, uh, I loved, I wanted to shout you out again for playing that ridiculous Universal Studios video game that you talked about a couple weeks uh, ago. That, I, am, I still keep thinking about that. Like, what an insane project. <laughs> I am, I know, it was, it's insane. Yeah. yeah, you literally just ride the rides, if you didn't listen, from yeah. Universal Studios. And you just walk around studios, and they're about 30 seconds each. Um, <clears throat> and it's terrible. Yeah. All right. Well, this will close the door, close the book. Before we do, before we do, yeah. uh, any last thoughts on Jaws? How do you feel saying goodbye to our Jaws franchise? Um, it was it was a lot of fun, I got to say. It didn't linger too long. The last two were bad in an entertaining way. Um, mm-hmm. And I got to watch the first one in full, besides just watching it on TV. So, you know, I really liked it, but I am ready to move on. What about you? I thought it was great. It was really fun. Yeah. Uh, a yeah, lot of fun, like one. side IP for us to do too, which I really appreciated. Um, yeah. It's yeah, a perfect, it was a, it was a fun series. Perfect yeah. thing to do for this podcast. I feel like so without a doubt. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, ready to Let's move jump on into the new out with the old, out with, that, the old. Uh, out with the old toss out that bath water, make sure the baby's in there too. We got some new shit to talk about today. Got some new shit, and now we can only talk about one film. There can only be one franchise to talk about for the next five episodes. <laughs> there can only be one. That's right. Are there five of these? Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. I, I thought you were going to groan, but you might be groaning after the next couple. I um, probably will be, but... Uh, I chose this I one would. to maybe make this... I to make this my dream of having a bad movie podcast, I think is why I chose this. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Not the first movie, of course, but... Um, no. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Highlander from 1986. The classic movie. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. How do we even begin talking about this? That's a great question. I, well, just from my own personal, like, point of view on this, I had never seen Highlander. I didn't really know what to expect turning this thing on. And, uh, you know, the name is, like, just made me think of, like, Ireland. I I was really expecting more of, like, um, what's that Mel Gibson movie? Um, Uh, Braveheart? Braveheart. I was expecting something like that. And this is not that. This is... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this is its own thing and i i thoroughly enjoyed watching this one today i'm so happy I bet, you picked this series yeah i bet uh there were some surprises in there Sean Connery. there sure were yeah. yeah i know you're a big bond guy so i was hoping you'd like that when he showed up yeah his his outfits the pearl earring the whole the whole <laughs> bit was great um yeah, yeah we'll get to it in a minute but like two minutes into the movie there's a fucking sword fight in the bottom of madison square garden and as soon as that happened i was like what am i watching like i <laughs> am in for a treat i, I love <laughs> the fact that you had no idea what was coming and no i, I the same yeah. way before i saw it i watched it only a year ago for the first time and uh okay i had i also kind of thought it was just this like cheesy i mean it is cheesy but you know what i mean like uh Scottish, a period piece. Yeah, yeah, like a period piece more so, um, and it is not that. It is full no. fantasy sci-fi um, with a touch of that, you know, um, that landscape at least. But um, yeah, let's get into it. It was uh, 1986, directed mm-hmm. by Russell Mulcahy. Um, I don't know what else he's done. Not a whole lot, I don't think. Teen Wolf, the movie. Um, right. Yeah, a bunch of crap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> more on that later. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I saw Scorpion King 2 on your screen there for a second. Oh, yeah, that's no. not, uh, not oh, great, man. Right. Yeah. Well, there's our next franchise. <laughs> Scorpion, Scorpion King? King? Well, starting with The Mummy and then through to Scorpion King. Okay, deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, Sean Connery and then also a bunch of songs on here from Queen. Were, the, were those originals? Yeah. I don't know, like, later yeah, so they, Queen well enough. To, they like, literally, yeah, made the entire soundtrack after watching the movie with the score and were just like, 
they were asked to do one song and they loved it so much that they made an entire album called kind of magic, which is a quote from the movie. Um, and they never really released a Highlander soundtrack, but the queen okay. album, almost all of those songs are in the movie are in the movie. Um, so it's more or less the soundtrack. Yes. Just yeah. not the score. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which okay, is crazy. Cool. Yeah, they just loved it so much that they, they did that. Um, it is crazy because Queen was huge at this point, right? Like, yeah. the, maybe the biggest band in the world at this time. Yeah, but I feel like this is towards the end of their career. When did Freddie Mercury die? In the 90s? Early 90s? Or late 80s? Late 80s, right? I, I don't actually know. I'm just, I'm just guessing. Yeah, 1991, looks like. Okay. Um, and it looks like the director was a music video director for years. So that's probably how they connected. How they connected, yeah. Okay, cool. And how they got them into this movie. Yeah. Um <clears throat> cool. Well, let's talk about it. Uh Great. Where should we begin? We should start? begin at Madison Square Garden. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the movie starts at a wrestling match in Yep. Madison Square Garden. Um there's like this, it's very brief, you know, just showing the wrestling, but it kind of pans around this, uh, a crane shot or something. And it kind of goes over the crowd and zooms in on this one goofy looking guy, uh, in the crowd. And he looks very serious. So um, serious. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of just sits there on him for a little while. Um, and I think it just immediately, he just kind of gets up and goes to the parking garage, right? Yeah, and then there's a flashback in there of him as a Highlander, right? So, like, back in old-timey Scotland? Is that where the Highlanders Scotland. are from? Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a flashback to that, and then it cuts back to him going into the parking lot. Um, I didn't, I hadn't, I mean, his hair is different, so I didn't quite connect that it was the same character at this point. It makes yeah. it pretty clear pretty quick, but um, he walks into the parking lot with a huge trench coat, and uh, somebody kind of pops out uh, from behind a pillar, and uh, immediately there's just this epic sword fight. We're like two minutes into the movie. Um, <laughs> and they're like Hell. running on hood, hoods of cars. The yeah. lights are coming in and out. They're Electricity like... is just sparking <laughs> everywhere. Yes. Uh, uh, Chris, what and... were your thoughts when, you, when, you, when this scene began here? It like, who, what even is all this? It, 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 it took me <laughs> aback a little bit. Uh, but I immediately loved it. And then they started doing so many backflips, like backflips yeah. off cars, back handsprings. <laughs> and I was like, I think I love this movie already. Uh, it, <laughs> it won me over in this first scene. <laughs> I know. It's so crazy. And there's, there hasn't been like any talking or anything yet. It's just kind of, maybe they kind of exchange a few words, um, but you don't really know what's going on. Um, yeah. Epic sword fight. Yeah. You don't really know if this guy's a good guy or a bad guy yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I I did read just a little filming note that they a lot of points in this movie they like strapped car batteries to their ankles to get sparks on their swords or something. Somehow what? they like. Yeah, I'll I'll send you the article. But <laughs> those sword sparks were like practical effects. I think some of them were. Yeah. Oh, um man. There's okay. a lot of like lightning effects that obviously aren't, but. I think some of the uh, sparking I, I, is. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I did want to talk about those effects with you, and we, we can come back to it later. We'll probably hit it at the end, but I loved how 80s they felt. Oh, yeah. It looked, it looked great. It looked awesome, dude. Practical yeah, effects yeah. with just a little CGI is so much yep. better. Um, <clears throat> like, we talked about that CGI scene from the new Indiana Jones. Like, mm -hmm. even though it was entertaining... Yeah, I just feel like the practical, like watching that scene versus the new Mission Impossible train scene is just night and day as far as an action scene. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into my thoughts on CGI right now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, lots that's of Tanner's other, That's Tanner's other podcast, Tanner Talking CGI. An old man complaining about mm -hmm. modern computer graphics. Right. Um, right, right. I'm not that old, listeners. Uh, just so you know, uh, we want our young audience. I'm not an That's old right. man. I'm a cool, hip, uh, young dude. Keep listening, um, youth. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I did have a, we were talking about the Highlander name itself. Just a quick question, because I don't want to forget. Do you think Highlander is, is that word specific to um, Scottish immortals or just Scottish people? It has nothing to do with, like, the immortal people in general. Like, does that make sense? Um, yeah, so it's like a, it's like a McLeod. John Connery thing, isn't not... a Highlander, right? Right. He's I just think you're right in that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Because the because I think the bad guy, whatever his name is, we'll we'll get to him. The Kurgan in the calls him like bring me the the Highlander. He says that a couple times, and so I think it. I think you're right. It's oh, just, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because he's yeah. the Kurgan, and he's from a Kurgan clan. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Cool. I'm glad I got that out of the way. There um, we go. Epic sword fight. I don't know if you have any specifics besides the backflips, which were making me laugh too. Um, yeah. But he, at some point, uh, knocks the sword out of his hand and slices this guy's head off. Yeah. Um, Again, we're four minutes into the movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, yeah. he proceeds to rise up off of the ground. Electricity uh, is just surging into him. Cars are beeping. Turning and- off. Turning, turning on, on exploding, exploding yeah. wind glasses breaking everywhere. Um, wind is blowing, and it's like he is absorbing the life force from the guy he just killed, basically, and screaming. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the parking lot at Madison Square Garden, I want to reiterate that we are in <laughs> one of the most public places yeah. <laughs> that I could possibly think of. <laughs> well, luckily, everyone's in the mat or in the uh show watching the wrestling match yeah um so nobody's in the parking lot at mm-hmm. this moment um but yeah he uh somebody's sword breaks i think his sword breaks no uh it might and explodes I... and then he used the other guy's sword to kill him can't remember but he stashes I think that he sword. Hides, i think he hides he comes back for his sword later he hides it on top yeah. of that light yeah, um, yeah so i don't think yeah. his sword like all the way breaks but part of it might have like you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he just kind of, he starts to run out and it cuts back the first like 30 minutes of this movie is a lot of back and forth between yeah. Scotland and here. And you kind of see him. I'm sure by this point, Chris, you realized it was the same guy maybe. Yes. Um, yeah. And then, so he's back in Scotland and they are, in a battle, the McClouds are in going to battle. Um, and there's this giant man in skeleton armor. Uh, pretty cool armor, too, right? Yeah, it's like a skull helmet and like black. It's pretty sinister. He's pretty gnarly looking at this point in the movie. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. he's badass. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Um, the let's see. There's so many great the Kirk, quotes the in this Kurgan. movie. The yeah. Kurgan. So many great quotes and just like it's every like three minutes. There's an awesome quote or an awesome moment. Um, he he mentions the line here. There can only be one. I don't know um, if you'd heard that before, but that's a classic, classic. I line. Wonder line. Been, yeah, that's like the it's yeah. been used in so many other things since then um, without people probably knowing where it came from. Um, yeah. But yeah. What do you think of this battle here? Uh, I mean, it was cool. Um, I'm not crazy about like period piece stuff, you know, like old timey fights. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the Kurgan is such a badass. And I think like that there will only be one or there can only be one stuff. I didn't really understand at this point in the movie because sure. I hadn't really explained the mechanics of, of how the island, or how the immortal stuff worked. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty dope battle. And I think at this point, the Kurgan had said, like, leave me the boy. So he instructed his army to not attack uh the highlander the uh, the, boy is mine exactly the boy is mine (laughs) um and he attacks and stabs the highlander in the chest right connor mcleod himself has been killed dispatched by the kurgan um and at this point you don't really know what the situation is i thought it might have been like a time travel thing and he like got zapped to the future instead of dying um because they hadn't quite explained the immortal thing yet you know Mm -hmm. um but i did connect it was the same character i'm not quite that stupid um and then it cuts back so after the battle do you have anything else on the battle 
No, but I, I I'm gonna rely on you to like kind of explain it from the first scene eyes because I already know sure. I knew what was happening already. So yeah. I, I'm liking that you're explaining a little bit more of where your thoughts were in these moments. Um, well, I thought they did a good job of keeping it like a little like they kind of slow played the immortal thing, and they didn't explain why these people were fighting in a in a parking garage with like a sword fight, a modern. You know, it's like a modern day wrestling match, but there's these two dudes fighting with swords. They didn't explain any of that until 20 yeah. minutes into the movie. And I kind of I kind of liked that with this movie. It, it slow Great. played the big reveal. Yeah, absolutely. They kind um, of they did kind of like there was like that opening paragraph. But sometimes if you have no frame of reference for those like opening crawls or something, it just is completely lost on you. I had to go back and read it later, but it oh, kinda, I don't even remember that. Yeah, it, it was just like a quick. That. Like right before the credits even started, it just like okay in the dawn of centuries, it's Sean Connery saying something. It's like one one line. Anyway, um, okay. yeah. So then I think it snaps back to the city after that. Yep. Um, and, and the modern day Connor McLeod was getting arrested for the murder yeah. that he did in the like uh, in the parking garage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also see for the first time, uh, the Kurgan. So the same dude with all the badass armor from the 1500s as is also there in modern day New York. Um, and he seems to be like looking for the Highlander. He's like hunting him down for some reason. Um, which again, they hadn't quite explained, but it, it's not super deep. Um, the, that dude, the Kurgan goes to a skeezy motel, um, and puts together his sword um there's yeah, like that, that sword is so huge yeah it's like in three pieces too which he just kind of like slides and locks the pieces together which seems a little flimsy to me for a badass sword you know what i mean yeah i mean, I mean is that how your badass sword works tanner is there a three piece no, or is it it's, it's a, pieces? A one solid piece you know good for slicing mm-hmm. heads good for slicing heads i mean there can be only one exactly <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah, and you find out during this interrogation that uh, he, um, that McGregor, or wait, is that it? McLeod, Connor McLeod yeah. uh, is an antique dealer. Um, and he, they're asking about the sword and how, if he knows anything about the sword because he's an antique dealer. And he says he doesn't deal with weapons or anything. And they have another case where a guy got his head chopped off um, a couple days before. Alluding to maybe another Highlander battle at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> could have been unrelated. I don't think they really talked about it. They also mentioned that that sword was like, it not only was it a sword, which is weird enough, but it was like a million dollar sword. This is like right. a high end, like collector's yeah. piece. Yeah. It's been folded 20 times and it's uh, from like ancient, ancient Japan before the technology mm-hmm. even existed. It's so. It's so uh, sharp. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then uh, they get uh, this woman named, what's her name here? Brenda. Um, mm-hmm. And she works with them in forensics, I guess. But she's written books on swords. You find out a little bit later. Um, ancient swords and <laughs> yeah. ancient weapons. So luckily she knows a lot about Did you about- write down the name of that book? It was such a ridiculous, it was like Metallurgy yeah. of Ancient Swords. And it was a <laughs> big book. It was a really Dude. big book. And you yeah. would really think it's like they're made out of like metal. And then maybe there's like a couple types of metal. But maybe I need to read her book. I just, I'm ignorant to the ways of well, metallurgy that, sword making. That can be um, your your IP project for this franchise read that read book. up on read up on that book yeah for sure um, if it's a real thing i'll read at least a chapter just look at it at least look at the pictures yeah yeah man. um so she's collecting metal bits and kind of investigating uh the sword itself and um looking into him as an antique dealer and the connection there mm-hmm. um yeah what else what else did i miss here um yeah i'm not sure is this where we go back uh, where like McLeod goes back to get his sword and then he follows her? Is this that scene or am I ahead a little bit? I think you're ahead a little bit. I, there's okay. A, there's a lot of little things here that aren't maybe worth mentioning. The interrogation scene is interesting. Um, 
Let's see. Oh yeah, he does follow her, and he grabs her, and then there's an attack. There's a sword fight, um, and he doesn't have a sword yet, though. Uh, oh right? yeah. And he kind of like just has like a piece of metal. Um, and then the cops show up, I believe. Yeah, the later. helicopter shows up. I did write that down. And shines its light on them fighting, and that's enough for the Kurgan to run away. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the big bad in the movie, and we've seen him in both timelines now, uh, the old and the new. Um, but, yeah, honestly, uh, the Highlander was acting like kind of a creep following the CSI lady around. Definitely. But then yeah. she, like, throws him the weapon, the metal bar or whatever, so... He, yeah. She realized he was trying to save her from this other guy. Or at least yeah. she, you know, thinks maybe he's probably dangerous as well. And then I think it goes yeah, back like, to time again, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think it shows. So in the last time we had checked in with uh, McLeod in the past, in the, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the name? In the Highlander days, I forgot the name of the movie. Um, he had been stabbed in the stomach by the Kurgan, and this one shows him somehow alive the day after the fight with the Kurgan. And everyone is like in his town is freaking out that he is a witch or that he's haunted. Yeah. Like they don't try, he should have died. You know, he's got he got the devil stabbed. in him. He's got the devil in him. And so the they kind of run him out of his little village. Uh, even his like wife or girlfriend who had been crying about him the night before, like is <laughs> like she's like one of the loudest talking about how they need to burn him and like get oh, yeah. him, you know kill this guy. Yeah, uh, they turn on him pretty hard. Definitely. I mean, that yeah. sounds pretty accurate. Maybe for the time, you know, they saw him yeah. die and they think he's possessed by the devil now or something. Um, mm-hmm. They beat him up and they, but they don't kill him. They just cast him out of town, right? Yeah, they banish him. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's an outlander. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> if you've seen that show, I was thinking about that show. I, do you know what that is? Outlander? I don't know. Yeah. That's there. There's a show called Outlander and it's about, it's kind of a, it's kind of a romance, but like sci-fi or something. A girl who gets like transported back in time randomly to Scotland and about these, about this time. And and it's like a time travel show, and she just has to live with like these Scottish guys and falls in love with one of the guys in the clan. Okay. Um, but uh, <clears throat> that's that's I was thinking about that when you were talking about time travel. There's Outlander, and Outlander is like somebody who's been outcast, or they're from like another culture or something, and brought in. They're an outsider, basically. They're an outsider. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. yeah, yeah. So these, I mean, he's a Highlander. Do you think in the scene where he and Sean Connery are at the beach, is he a Lowlander there? <laughs> oh, does, the, does his title change with the elevation of the land that he's at? I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It, it yeah. changes just based in the moment. Yeah, <laughs> in the moment. Yeah, exactly. What kind of lander are you? That's the, that's our survey question. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where are we at in this movie? So I don't know. A lot of time alive. jumping. It's He's hard to banished. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And we're just kind of jumping timelines between the two, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and he just uh, passed out, and does... then it shows him with a new young lady, and they're just yeah. living alone in the mountainside and banging all the time, and whatever else they're doing, they're doing. Yeah. Um, and he's a blacksmith. Is that what you're talking about with banging? Or are you talking about that scene where they're making it? So hot. So hot. Well, she does say, you can do that to me forever if you'd like, my lord. Oh, she uh, does say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about making her metal stuff, not sex. Oh, okay. No, this movie's no. so complicated. <laughs> There's so much to track. <laughs> um, yeah. Then what happens, Chris? Who shows up? Dude. Oh, then we meet Sean Connery, uh, whose yeah. name in this movie is Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez. Uh, <laughs> he is uh, Spanish, is what he claims, even though he has the exact Sean Connery accent that you know from all of his other movies. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, and- they said, I read that the director was like, we don't really, we didn't care to change anyone's accent. Same with uh, Christopher Lambert, who was French and didn't speak any English when he got the part. Um, Seriously? Yeah. And you could huh. tell, I mean, he kind of has a funny accent or funny way of talking. 
Uh, he sounds he like Arnold does. Schwarzenegger sometimes to me. Um, yeah. He but sounds they, a little they, like the guy from the room a couple times to me. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's amazing yeah, that he didn't speak English before this movie. That's really impressive because it's not it's not that bad. It's not distracting most of the movie. There's just oh no, scene, so, yeah, yeah, definitely not. Um, and the, the director was just like, it doesn't really matter. They could have picked up their accent from anywhere because they're so old. So that's true. Which totally I like. True. Yeah, it's just like it doesn't yeah. it doesn't matter where they're from because they've been everywhere and live forever. So yeah. Um, what we anyway. really need to talk about, though, is what Sean Connery is wearing throughout this movie, because it is <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, what do you call <laughs> this kind of outfit? I don't even know, man. It's like this poofy... Conquistador? That, that word came to mind, but maybe that's not right. Yeah, I mean... It's, he's got peacock he's come, feathers. Yeah, and like red, like poofy shoulders. He's got all sorts of jewelry. He's wearing gloves and tall boots throughout it, and he's got this he, awesome mustache. He looks like a musketeer or something, right? Yes, he's super musketeery. That's a good yeah. way to describe. It. He's yeah. got like a Spanish. It's like a Spanish, old Spanish, uh, piratey look to him, and he's mm-hmm. yeah, jewelry and all that with the peacock feathers in his hat and peacock boa. Yeah, um, like a a real flamboyant pirate. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Not as good as his Zardoz outfit, but it's close. I don't. What's Zardoz from? What am I missing here? Oh, it's Sean Connery. It's, I think it's supposed to be a bad movie, but can you see? Are you still watching my stream? Here? <laughs> I'm still watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he wears I've, like I've this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one piece. Uh, what do you? I don't even know. It's like a diaper with uh, suspenders. With suspenders. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, anyway. Look up um, Zardoz. It's uh, it's worth worth the Google. If you're yeah, like so, me, and you're not familiar. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So Sean Connery is here to teach him in all his fabulous ways. Um, the way in, about of being an immortal and how to fight better and um everything to do with his new abilities. Um, are these yeah. new abilities or has he always been immortal? From what I, I did, some research on the the whole franchise just to get get in the zone here, and from what I can gather, um, you are born with it, okay, but it doesn't like it only can be enacted if you die before your time, before your actual like if you died of old age, nothing would happen. But if you die okay. violently, uh, randomly, like somebody stabs you, then it it can trigger or something dude so i might be a highlander well i'll have to kill you to find out i think it's worth it dude (laughs) it's It's a 50 50 shot i'm either a highlander or i'm not i just imagine like this tragic news story of two people (laughs) killing each other to find out if they're highlander (laughs) they watched highlander and then they got in a sword fight (laughs) oh okay that's i'm gonna look that up for next week if that has ever happened okay yeah i'm sure it has we live in a well, it's like the little girls who believed in slender man and like i don't know they were like acting out things that he was telling them to do or something like that and they like stabbed another little kid i don't know it's a fucked up story but um anyway moving on from that moving on from child children <laughs> stabbing people uh yeah we get a great montage of of training right so sean connery's training uh, uh mcleod uh, i always i have it written down and i keep yeah. almost saying mcleod because when i hear mcleod i think like it's fox McLeod. McLeod from nintendo 64 anyway absolutely um well he was a yeah, highlander so maybe he was a highlander star um, fox yeah star fox um yeah we get a great training montage then like running around on beaches and uh like sword fighting on tops of rocks and, and when there's uh, lightning out he's it's like going into his fingers and stuff Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool looking yeah it's pretty dope yeah um and then i did also love the scene they were on a boat in the middle of a lake at one point and uh, sean connery just pushes uh mcleod off the boat and he it starts to drown and sean connery's just like you're immortal you can't drown and so he walks to shore along the bottom of the of the ocean or of the lake um it's kind of a funny little scene he says, um, um, before he gets pushed in, he says, I don't like boats. I don't like water. I'm a man, not a fish. 
<laughs> Great point. Yeah. And he, he calls him Haggis. He calls uh, Sean Connery Haggis and tells mm-hmm. him what it is. And he's like revolted by it. Um, and you find out he's Spanish, Egypt, or he's like Egyptian, not Spanish, but he lived in Spain for a long time. So yep. it's it movies all over the place with uh, their backgrounds. Well, and he was married. His most recent wife, they established, is Japanese, which is why right. he has that dope samurai sword um, that he uses throughout the movie. Um, but anyway, uh, so we're... Uh, oh, uh, Sean uh, Connery tries to talk uh, McLeod into dumping his girlfriend because he's going to outlive her, right? So, like, the, the downsides of everlasting life is, like, you can't really make connections with people because you're not going to die. You know, you're going to outlive them, which is, uh, you know, I, I hope that they explore that a little more in the, in the follow-up movies. It's, uh, I think, one of the interesting things about, I don't know. Oh, yeah. This and, yeah. like... I know Tuck Everlasting is another movie that I that I've seen that has like in, immortal characters, and they talk about that in there a lot. Yeah, um, the the hardship kind of, of, weird... uh, of do you want to live forever? kind of thing. Once you die. Oh yeah. Um, exactly. That's actually a question yeah. in the survey as well. Would you want to live forever? Um, there we go. If you could. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I just real quick I, back to the water scene there. I just. Please. At one point, a f- when he's out of the water, like a fish falls out of his kilt, which I thought was mm-hmm. a nice touch. There's just so many little moments. Of f- the humor is really on point in this movie, too. Yeah. In, the, in just the right way. Yeah. Without I cheapening totally the crazy action and all that. Yeah. And the, I also just love, like, I mean, we talked about it at the beginning, that, that, sh- that crane shot in Madison Square Garden. That was such a cool shot. And there are yeah. so many, like, really creative... Yeah, cuts between scenes and like it's just like really. They took a lot know, of like, a lot of chances, or what do you call it? A lot of. Uh, um, uh, I think chances works. Yeah, like a lot of small risks, and it's like yeah, it's yeah. just a really, really interesting. Yeah, the way a lot that of they big put it all together is really interesting. Is what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Yeah. And they all um, pretty much hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that a samurai sword metaphor? It's base, baseball metaphor, oh. crack of the bat, all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> where are we here? Getting lost in time. Oh well, we're about to lose one of our favorite characters. That's about where we are. Already? I think so. Yeah, I think so. There's it's yeah. a long scene. There's a lot of fun stuff for them. He's teaching them how to like feel the the stag, and like mm-hmm. connect with the animals and all that. Um, he mentions that they never fight on holy ground. Um, or okay, basically he tells the whole everything about being a Highlander, where um there can only be one person. They're constantly playing what they call the game, uh, which is them just like fighting to the death. And the last person to ever to to win the prize, as they call it, uh, is is the last person. Like once that's over, there are no more immortals or something. Um, but they can pop up randomly and we'll get into what happens in the sequels. A um, lot of uh, debate on that um, from fans of the series, but um, okay. yeah, basically yeah. that. Um, he kind of gives a rundown of the rules. Um, yeah. So and how, it's do, called... how do more, so like when one Highlander wins, then there can be no more, or sorry, when one immortal wins, there can be no more immortals. Is that how? Is that the rule? That's like what they set up in this movie that he will be the last immortal forever. Okay. Yeah, but then they made sequels and it kind of they change a little bit of, of that. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about what powers he has at the end. But um, let's see. They he mentioned something about they would never fight on holy ground, and I don't think they ever follow through with that i don't know what the holy ground is maybe it's scotland but i don't think, well, I, think I don't think, I think scotland's even of, what's that oh i think that's why they don't fight in the church later oh holy ground actually holy ground okay yeah because i like he says i'll see you outside like he's they're, they're they don't fight in the church and i think it's because of the i holy was ground. i was yeah. wondering why they didn't just fight there like why do they yeah. care i mean they're immortal why do they care what other people are seeing them do you know well, um, I think it's pretty clear that uh, Kurgan? Kurgan, 
Kurgan, thank you. I almost said Krangbin. Uh, Kurgan uh, is just has a lot of respect for the cloth. He's very respectful of those nuns and the, the priest. In that yeah, scene. We'll, we'll get we'll get to that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to mention the um, when they absorb the power, when they absorb like the lightning and the the power, it's called the quickening, um, which I just think is a cool term. Um, yeah. Yeah. When they kill another Highlander who's already killed other people, do they absorb more power? I don't know for sure. I assume, yeah, like if they've killed like four other Highlanders, they absorb like five Highlanders worth of power. Is that what you're right. saying? Right. Yeah, that's probably. I think so because it seemed like at the end when he absorbed the final guy, he absorbed way more than he did the other times. Totally like, true. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like a much bigger, uh, yeah. A lot more power. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that leaves us uh, to the attack. That's what right. happens here. Well, yeah. So uh, Kurgan is basically just uh, hunting them through time. And so he catches up to uh, Sean Connery, who's out there hanging out with, uh, uh, with McLeod's girl, uh, this lady named Heather. And uh, he shows up to kill. He's got his sword ready to go. And they have this like, pretty epic fight uh in this like rock tower would you describe it as that yeah castle-y kind of looking small yeah. castle but yeah we're back sorry we're back in the past timeline so we're back in the yeah. highlander days um and uh they fight up the steps it's a lot of just pretty sweet sword fight and as it's going the tower starts to like crumble around them so good um, so good man it's so good uh and yeah, I mean, they just fight back and forth. And then uh, Kurgan has this awesome line at the end, uh, tonight you sleep in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then drops another, there can be only one. Uh, and then uh, we, we lose our good friend Ramirez. Dies. Yeah, and there's like, so as the thing is crumbling, he's on like the, the staircase and all the walls mm-hmm. had crumbled around it. But the staircase leading up into the sky is still kind of standing. And he's like at the top of it, and they're, it's like looking up into the sky, and there's like lightning happening and all around him. It's a very cool looking scene. Um, really well shot for the yeah. uh, effects that they had. Um, and yeah, he gets killed. Um, it also shows during the scene that Sean Connery is the one that gives him the next scar. So in the future, in the present time, uh, Kurgan has like a big slit on his throat. He didn't quite cut his head off, though. Um, which is the only way to kill an immortal if we have I was gonna that. ask that in a later yeah. scene. That's the only way they die? That's the only way they die. You, you have, have to chop cut their heads their off. Head off. Yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um every death ends in a head chop <laughs> in this <laughs> official death. So that's what that moment is like which is almost the most badass way to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um that it's like Sean Connery basically almost cut his head off. He almost won, but was bested in the end. Uh, yes. So I like that as a little touch where he has like a neck slit for almost getting his head cut off, but not quite. Um, and later on, he's got like uh, safety pins all along, like through his neck slit. Did you see that? <laughs> mm-hmm. really, I did see that. He's really grotesque. Real nice uh, touch. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it flashes back to the present. I, I was kind of curious during this flashback scene where mcleod was during all this right because sean connery's there with his girl with mcleod's girl um maybe he's off hunting or something i don't know yeah i don't know um yeah because it's implied later that then uh kurgan like raped his girl and uh, mcleod's nowhere to be found Um, yeah so anyway uh, I, sure. I loved also he's just like knocking that building down with his sword like he's just yeah. like <laughs> swinging and just knocking everything down oh it's so good the swords are so powerful in this movie like they cut down like rock structures they cut down metal scaffolding they cut through pipes it's just it's great yeah 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 um so after that scene they go back to the present um and you see I can't remember exactly what happens, but it's somewhere around here where you meet his assistant, Rachel. Yep. yep. Yeah. So he's got like a, what is her, not an assistant, but like a front desk person at his 
uh, antique store named Rachel. Um, and you kind of wonder what's going on there. She's been with him a long time, and you find out that uh, through another flashback to World War II um, that he fought in the war, and he uh, saved this little girl from... She was, like, hiding and scared of all the, the battling happening, and he found her, and that's the same girl, like, 40 years later. Um, yeah. Which is kind of a cool so touch. I like yeah, the it idea. Nice. It's kind of like that part in uh, one of the one of the X Men movies or Wolverine movies or something where it shows him like he's battled through, he's been through all the battles throughout time, kind of thing because he's can't die. Um, I like that as a as a concept. Like you could do a lot with that. Show him in all these different time periods. Uh, being yeah, there's part the, of, yeah. There's so, one other scene that it shows during the American Revolution, and it, yeah, I, I agree. It's it's kind of it's kind of fun jumping to. Did they show that? I, I I missed that one. Yeah, remember. he's like wasted drunk, and there's a duel. Oh, that one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was maybe the goofiest scene in the movie. It's super goofy, and I don't even know if I wrote it down, so I don't know where it lands with the rest of this, but it's kind of an out-of-place flashback anyway, so it could have kind of fit anywhere. Yeah, um, and this this just kind of furthers his, like, she talks to him a lot about how lonely his life is as a Highland, or as an immortal. Um, mm-hmm. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, like love anybody you know he doesn't want to live because the movie really dwells on some of these these deeper moments which i like um yeah. about being immortal um which i think is a fun concept to think about not fun but interesting it's um, certainly interesting yeah yeah um let's see i think next he's gonna go meet up with the sword writer sword book writer correct i think you're right Brenda. Girl. yeah yeah so we're back in new york city in the present time um and he goes on a date with brenda and brings a bottle of 1793 brandy which is a huge flex yeah have you like ever an brought anything Hennessy. that nice on a date i nothing pre-1800 for me no <laughs> Yeah, that pre eighteen hundred stuff is just really hard to find. So props to him. I brought props. I brought some uh, eighteen oh one. Eighteen oh one. Uh huh. Yeah. No, that's no, just a tequila. brand of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. 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 It's a and I could tell you right away like the bottle was fucking old as shit. It, that's a, that, another cool thing that you can do in this in this franchise. Yeah. You could yeah. just have this awesome old stuff. Um. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I also made a note. There's a Queen song in this part of the soundtrack. Um, one of the first ones. We talked about Queen a little earlier, but yeah. Uh, well, the nice opening the theme song, song has uh, the oh god, what's it called? Um, <clears throat> Princes of the Universe. That's how the movie starts. Right, 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 right. Okay, yeah. And then I think that's their bigger hit of it. And then this one is called Who Wants to Live Forever? And it's kind of a ballad about living forever. <laughs> right. Because this is where it flashes back again. A lot yeah. of flashing forward and back to, to Heather, his girlfriend yeah. in uh, the Highlander times, uh, who he uh, who was there when, uh, when Ramirez died, Sean Connery. And uh, it shows her as an old woman, uh, but he is still young. He's the same Highlander that he was before, uh, right? But he's immortal and she's not, so she's about to die. So we get a scene on her deathbed. Um, and it's kind of melancholy, you know? Yeah. He, yeah. He's a true lover. I like in this, they make him to be like, he really does like fall in love with these women and like he stays with them through their whole, you know, at least this one. Um, he stays with him through their whole life and like, um, yeah, watches them die. (laughs) Pretty crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And she asks him to light a candle on her birthday every year. And I don't know if that comes back around if he does that or not. I think it does. I think that's uh, what he does at the church. Oh, right. Okay. He lights a candle there and says it's for her. So I was assuming that that was a, a birthday thing. Um, I do um, want to go back because that is a, a good scene. Um, and, it, you know, it's jumping around in time, so I don't know where it takes place. But at this right. dinner party, he realizes the girl is working for the cops. Brenda's working for the cops. He finds mm-hmm. a recorder and uh, sees the cop outside um, in his car. And she's got, like, a gun and everything. And so he kind of confronts her about it. Um, 
and he wraps up her book that she wrote and gives it to her as a gift. Uh, yeah. So this date doesn't really go well as a date, um, but it was they're both kind of playing each other a little bit. I think um, you're right. Yeah. And she got a nice drink from the 1700s out of the deal. So like, absolutely score there, you know, probably rotten at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think this is when they go back to 1783, the, uh, the year of the brandy, of course. And he talks about what a good year it was, but this is also the year it flashes back to you, you were saying during the revolution or whatever. Thank you. Yes. Um, and he's like super drunk I think it's the brandy that makes him remember this moment or something. So he's really drunk and having a sword fight with a Brit. And the, the British guy is this kind of dandy guy character. And uh, um, he's just like stabbing him a bunch, but he's not dying. Um, he won't stay dead. Oh, then he starts this. Well, he stabs him first. They're sword fighting. But then. Oh, that's what they are sword fighting. Yeah. He ends he up shooting his, assistant. his like, assistant or something. Yeah. It was a strange little scene. Yeah. Supposed to be a comedy scene or something. Like um, you said, it was kind of a comic relief scene, like cut yeah. into the middle of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it cuts to the present again. And he's and meeting he's a man there. on the on a bridge, right? Is that him? Uh yes, 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 yes. He meets another immortal. Yeah. An old uh, friend of his, and they just kind of chat a little bit. Um, I don't have much on that scene though. They were kind of joking with each other. Like it's clear they're buddies, but it's also clear that they don't really trust each other because he offers him like some alcohol and he's like, did you poison it? Um, right. You know, like I think there, you know, there can only be one. So like how good of a friend could he really be? You know? Yeah. It seems like some of these immortals do get along. Right. And then other Mm -hmm. ones do not. I mean, that's kind of what they're setting up here. Yeah. For whatever reason. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah. What happens next, Chris? Uh, well, yeah, I don't have a lot on that scene, but then we see that same immortal that uh, that McLeod was talking to a couple minutes later. Um, Kurgan uh, tracks him down, and they're having a sword fight in this dark alley. Yeah. Um, and it, while they're fighting, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say they basically set him up in that scene just to be killed is like, Oh, here's another immortal. There's more of them out there. It's not just, it's not just these two, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's all. I um, no, no, totally. Uh, but it turns out it's just the three of them, right? Like, I think so. Yeah. The, yep. We're at the end game of the, the whole Highlander, like or the whole immortal fight for, for the last one alive. Yep. Um, cause yeah. there's only a couple of them left and they're all in New York city. Um, But anyway, uh, we see them fighting in an alley and this rando, just like not an immortal, just some guy uh, driving around looking for, is he he looking for them? Uh, What was that other dude doing? Or is he just like a guy who likes his gun? I think he's, uh, yeah, I think he's uh, just, uh, you know, I got a gun, so I'm going to, going to help out in this moment or something like that. A good guy with a gun. (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly right. Uh, yeah. So he has an assault rifle and he shows yeah. up, sees these guys fighting, um, comes back. The other immortal has been killed at this point. And so the guy uh, just like empties his assault rifle into Kurgan, uh, like so many bullets. And so this was when I was going to ask you, like, what are the death rules? Because it really seems like he should be dead. But thank you for reminding me. You have to cut their heads yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. So nothing. Yeah. Nothing kills him like that. Another quickening happens right here. Uh-huh. Um, absorbs this guy's soul right in front of all these people. They all kind of see it, um, including the the good citizen guy with the machine gun. Um, yep. And uh, the Kurgan absorbs all the shit, and then he gets this car pulls up with this old lady, and he he walks up to it and he slices the the roof off the car like, like a can through. of anchovies, dude. <laughs> it was. <laughs> So good. Yeah. And he pulls the husband out and there's this like kind of a screaming old lady and he's he just says Mom <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, mom. And then drives off. 
It drives off with her and she's screaming. So like she's like standing up screaming, help, help. And then like the cuts to immediately and she's on the front of the car. She's falling <laughs> out onto the hood of the car. Yeah. And this is like a super 75, funny. 80 year old woman. Yeah. Super funny scene. Yeah. So uh, after that, it's the, um, the guy, the good guy with the gun, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, he's alive in the hospital and the police are kind of asking him questions about what he saw. And he tells him straight up what he saw. Um, being like, you're going to think I'm crazy, but, um, you know, he tells them about the quickening and all that. And they just kind of look at him like he's crazy. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, I thought it was interesting too. When, when he was explaining the quickening, it went to like, silent outside of the room it was another one of those big like interesting swings that they took like you didn't actually hear him explaining it you just saw his face and like his his arms going up like kind of like throwing him up and like trying to show what's happening because it's it's kind of unexplainable if you don't know what's happening exactly Um, and that's probably how you felt chris (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) but here i am having to actually explain it i feel like the screenwriters were like well how do we explain this with words, oh, I know, let's just not. Let's just, like, <laughs> yeah. leave it to the viewer's imagination. Um, Pretty good. Yeah, it was great. Great scene. Um, and then there's also a little bit in here uh, with Brenda, um, our sword expert woman, uh, and she's doing a little bit of snooping. So she goes to, uh, you know, uh, McLeod is, is living in New York City under the alias Nash, and so she tracks down the birth record from the, from this kid, and uh, and follows that to the doctor who delivered the baby, and that doctor says that the baby died on delivery. So this this yeah. Nash guy, uh, this is not that's not his real name. Yeah, um, which I, that was funny because it would have been like forty years ago. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess not every day the mom and the baby die during childbirth. So I guess he would remember it, but he remembered everything about that birth. Um, that would be really traumatic as the doctor to go that's through. That's true. It. I was thinking, like, he, this guy's probably delivered hundreds of babies, but mm-hmm. yeah, probably not all of them like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then she finds out and does more digging that um, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that nope, he has right assumed there. the name of tons of dead babies throughout the mm-hmm. last like 400 years. Um, somehow they traced. Um, what was it? Oh, was it the shop that he owned or something? They're like, we're looking at the property owners of all of like yep. of the shop or something like that, or his house or whatever. And it's been transferred to a bunch of like people who or babies who had died basically throughout time. So he's been assuming their names. Um, so his we... full plot at this point is to live for like 50, 60 years in this place. And then, uh, assume a new identity of a dead baby and then yeah. leave all of his wealthy possessions on to said dead baby. Yeah. Uh, it's an incredible scheme. And they, they find his like signatures from the deeds. Um, and <laughs> I love that scene. I love that scene. That's <laughs> an old school, like eighties hacker kind of vibe to it where it's just like, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, and just picking out part. Yeah. Electronic signatures. Yeah, and um, all the signatures just look like they were typed in Comic Sans. It's like it's not <laughs> like a real signature. It's just like, oh, the N in this alias like matches here, and yeah, it's great. Really, yeah. really nice. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I think after that, uh, after... I think we go to the church. Yeah. 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 So we've we've alluded to this scene a couple times, but uh, Nash is there praying. He lit a candle. Uh, for his deceased uh, lover from uh, Highlander times. And he's sitting there praying and the Kurgan shows up uh, and the Kurgan is wanted for murder. His face is on the front of the newspapers and everything after killing the last immortal. By the um, way, the, the newspaper says headhunter three cops zero. <laughs> <laughs> so that was funny. That's nice. That's a nice headline. Um, yeah, and uh, he has changed his appearance to go incognito. So he's shaved his head. He's got a, a, a pretty sick tat on one, uh, one side of his skull. Um, he shaved his head all the way down except for, like, it looks so bad. Like, he leaves yeah. one long strand on the side. Just, like, oh, imagine the, the worst, yeah. like, psychotic-looking guy with, like, just, like, a strand of 
a little one long clump of hair on the side. Yep. Um, and like Miss This patches. is also the part of the movie that Tanner mentioned earlier where he's got the clothes pin or the there's clothes pins, right? Yeah. Across his neck scar. Um, yeah. yeah, so he is really he's looking like something at this point in the movie. Um Yeah, um and he, he mentions here that we're the final two immortals. Um Yep. And he says this shaved head is his disguise. It just looks still looks like a I mean, you can't mistake this guy just because you looks like a head. looks like a psychopath, like who oh, they're looking for in the news. Yeah, this like... this guy, by the way. <laughs> side note is yeah. uh, this actor plays is Mr. Krabs, the voice of Mr. Krabs on SpongeBob, which I thought was crazy. What? That is crazy. <laughs> it's this guy, the Kurgan. It's, yeah, Clancy Brown is his name, and he's been in a bunch of stuff. But yeah, he is the voice of Mr. Krabs, which I thought was crazy. Wow. Um, okay, that is pretty crazy. He's in like oh, John Wick Chapter Four. He's in. He's in some good stuff, man. Yeah. I guess he was pop, made. God, he has so much stuff here. Go to the um, top. A lot, there of, a couple lot of, like, of voice acting. Yeah. Um, down oh, Shawshank bit. Redemption. He Shawshank was Redemption there. and Starship Troopers. Yeah, those are big movies, man. Yeah. Isn't that new Asho- Ahsoka? New Star Wars thing. New Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, cool. He looks totally and, different. And he's, like, and he's Mr. Krabs. That's, Mr. That's Krabs. Killer. I mean, that's a big, yeah. that's a big role for sure. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> anyways, so yeah, they uh, they're talking in this holy holy space here where they're not allowed to battle. Um. Mm-hmm. And he is just being a creep to the nuns. He's doing the tongue lick like ah, da, at them mm-hmm. and like, like making the, them all the... uncomfortable. Yep, he licks the priest's hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just being a real sleazer. He said, Father, forgive me, I am a worm, and then he licks his hand. <laughs> um, and then he says, nuns, nuns, no sense of humor. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is where he mentions that he he captured and raped uh, that girl back in Scotland, um, yep. which he said was, he thought was um, Sean Connery's girl, but it turns out it was McLeod's girl. Um, let's see. Yep. What else happens here? He kind of like they, they. He says, "I'll meet you outside." And on his way out, he says, "It's better to burn out than to fade away." A little mm-hmm. Neil Young, Neil Young shout out randomly. Yep. Uh, and then we cut. Uh, so after that scene, we 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 go back to Brenda, who has discovered that Nash is a fraud. Uh, we haven't talked about this part, right? When she no. confronts Cloud. Okay. Right. Um, so she goes to his place of business and talks to that Rachel girl. And so he kind of pops up and he comes clean. He tells her he's immortal. Um, and, uh, she stabs him or he, he kind of like yeah, makes he her makes stab her. him. Yeah. yeah. And he stabs himself again. Um, nothing happens and they, they get to, they get to kiss him instantly. Oof. More than kissing. There's Kissin, some nip in this scene. There's some booty in this scene. The note Not that dead. I have here was uh, in this happened in this order: kissies, mm-hmm. sexies, boobies, lickies, buddies, grabbies. <laughs> uh, you are a poet, my friend. Yeah. Oh, in that I'm order. A, yeah, I'm a toddler uh-huh. poet. A toddler um, poet. <laughs> I feel like that should be a question. Add a add a ease to Tanner's list. <laughs> okay. Kiss, kissies, lickies, yeah. <laughs> buddies, grabbies. Uh-huh, um, buddies, grabbies. <laughs> uh, I am a child. Um, so let's see. After that, after the little sex scene here, um, they just kind of she kind of leaves him, and um, they're walking around, and she says, "Most people are afraid to die." But you have another problem. You're afraid to live. Yeah. Um, just more hits, him, hits him where it hurts. Deep thought stuff about being immortal. Yeah. Uh, and she says, don't lose your head on her way off. <laughs> um, yeah. And then she immediately. They use that line a couple of times. That, yeah. They, that don't lose your head. Throughout. Yeah. And I yeah. like it even more now that I know that that's how you have to kill them. So Absolutely. thank you again for that, Tanner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the uh, right after that. She walks away from him, goes to her apartment, and Kurgan has followed her there. Um, mm-hmm. And she runs in her apartment, 
instead of running back down the stairs, which I thought was she could have ran out the building in a way. Right. But instead, she runs into her apartment and locks the door. Then she just stands right behind the door. Right. Like <laughs> after all this stuff we've seen the Kurgan go through, like this yeah. flimsy wooden door, that's your whole plan. You're totally yeah, exactly. right. She could have ran away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go out the fire escape or whatever. Cause yep. you know, these days everyone had a fire escape like that. Um, <clears throat> So let's see what happened. Oh, he yeah, kidnapped so the, her. The Kurgan p- kidnaps her. Um, and then there's oh, just this me. montage of him acting like a psychopath and her having to deal with it. Uh, uh, they like load up in a car and they, he plays chicken by driving into oncoming traffic. Uh, he does some light vehicular manslaughter, kills two or three people. Yeah. He's just uh, running people over laughing, yeah. covering his, he's like mocking her with like, ah, I like, mocking her screaming and like covering his eyes and just laughing and rocking out. It's just a crazy, crazy scene. I loved it. And made um, so much better by the fact that he's Mr. Krabs. It's so much better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the guy, man. He is such an unhinged psycho through this scene. I know. Um, but he, he does it so well. He's really great at it. Yep. Um, and then there's a song playing during this, I believe is, Oh, no, no. Um, somebody says, Highlander says something about it's a kind of magic to uh, to Rachel. And that's the Queen album name and song title, which gotcha. I, I just okay. thought it's it's just, again, so crazy that they wrote a whole just they wrote all the music for the song and then released their own album with the songs on it. Not even as part of the soundtrack. Um, uh, it'd have to be our milk for next week. Let's yeah. Listen to that album. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I got cool. some other some other stuff, uh, but yeah, um, okay, cool. Talk about it soon. So now we're coming down towards the wire here, towards the end here. Um, how yep. does this movie end, Chris? Uh, well, after all this, uh, uh, Kurgan calls uh, McLeod and leaves a voicemail, letting him know that he had kidnapped this girl. He's trying to like kind of bring McLeod out from hiding so they can have their final showdown. Uh, so McLeod says goodbye to his assistant, Rachel, and, a pa- and like, whether I win or lose, I'm not coming back kind of a thing, um, and uh, goes to save Brenda. And Brenda is uh, chained, and Brenda's the, the sword expert, the CSI lady that we've been mentioning. I don't know that we've said her name very much, but uh, she has been kidnapped, and she's, like, chained or tied up to this scaffolding, uh, like, with like a neon sign. Do you remember what the neon sign said? Like, yeah, silver, it's silver, cup? silver cup studios, yeah. silver cup studios. Okay. And I was wondering um, if that's a real studio or not. Probably not, but yeah, I have no idea. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, anyway, so she's tied up to the scaffolding behind this giant neon sign. And so like, uh, McLeod shows up, goes up to cut her down and, uh, boom, Kurgan jumps out sword fight on the scaffolding. Uh, yeah, do you Another, have any highlights from this epic uh, uh, showdown at the end? It is so Yeah, there's some good stuff. He's like twirling just like twirling through like maybe like six, seven times and while cutting the bottom part of the sign post or the scaffolding yes. or whatever that's holding the letters from the, the studio thing. Um so he's twirling in in a circle while cutting these things going across. <laughs> And then that makes it so all the letters start falling one by one, and the sign starts crumbling. Um, it knocks over this water tank. Um, I, we need to talk about the water <laughs> tank, dude. There's so much water in there. I know. Yeah. It fills like, up the it, entire roof it with water. It floods the roof. So they're yeah. having a, a fight submerged like, up, up, to their, up to their man titties in water. Um, From one water On lake. a roof. But they're still on a roof, right? It's like a rooftop swamp yeah. fight it's oh yeah it's so awesome <laughs> it's crazy yeah and there's like electricity sparks everywhere because of the yep. water and that and the the sign being lit up um yeah. mcleod at one point like goes under the water to hide from the from the kurgan um yeah yeah it's it's so it's so unhinged and then uh finally the the whole scaffolding falls down um but brenda survives because she's kind of like chained to it still um mm-hmm. And she gets free. Uh, the sword fight kind of escalates and they fall onto like a skylight in the top of the roof. And then through the skylight, like 60 feet, they fall so far. Mm-hmm. 
uh, to the to like into this warehouse space for the final showdown. Um, they sword fight for a bit, uh, just like sword duel. And uh, the Kurgan is about to kill the Highlander uh, when Brenda kind of steps in and blocks his kill shot. Um, and then uh, and then they duel, uh, culminating, as you would expect, with the Highlander uh, chomping off the Kurgan's head. Yeah, so the Kurgan, he does his little tongue lick and yep. uh, he lunges at him. And that's the final moment. Uh, gets his head chopped off right here. Slowly, you don't see it. I mean, it's like he slices through it, and they just he stands there, he smiles, and then his head starts to fall back. Um, yeah, great, great music in this scene. The score is good on top of the Queen music. The, the score mm-hmm. by whoever did the music, I forget right now, um, but it's it's also really good. And then a really epic. The scene. graphics here, though, dude. The graphics, the graphics here and are just, incredible. This shot, just like, like the uh, the set design, not set design, but the cinematography, the shot choices here with like him in yeah. front of these like twenty windows or ten windows behind him. Um, really good, just like lighting and set design and cinematography here. Cool choices. And, the oh, windows yeah, all well, break. All the, all the quickening stuff. All the like yeah. the skull like images yeah. that are like superimposed over the shots. Yeah. And like the light, the fake lightning, like all the stuff that they added in looks so cool. It's like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I, I've seen movies that have this same sort of animation and it doesn't hit like this. And this is like yeah. such a cool combination for this movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. glass breaks, he rises up. And like you said, all the skulls and weird like demon things are kind of like entering and just he's screaming and everything's blowing up and kind of uh, sparking around him and stuff. Very cool um yeah yeah and then he kind of just falls down and now he's he's the one he's the one left he won the game and he he won the prize um which they kind of explain at the very end here um she asks him can you tell me about the prize and it's another good thing about this movie it's fully this movie stands alone you don't need any sequels or anything really yeah um, because it fully wraps up the whole plot line um I mean, it open. It's it's great. Like you can have a lot more stuff surrounding this franchise, but it also is in and of itself. It has a ribbon at the end, you know. So he yeah. Well, at this he, point, he's no longer immortal, right? I think he's immortal, but he can have kids. He did. They did mention he can have kids now, right? Oh, but I, I thought he lost his immortality because he was like stoked that he got to be in love with this girl. Because he wasn't going to outlive her again. That they did mention that, but he can also read. He can understand and read the thoughts of every person on the planet all at once. Yes, he can also do that, like some (laughs) real Professor X shit. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, it's like a whirlwind in my head. He's telling about the prize. He can understand everyone over, over, you know, all the diplomats, presidents, and all that, and he can help them understand each other. So they don't go into too much detail about what he can really do with it. And it seems like they just kind of live their life out in the Scottish Hills now or something. Um, but now he can grow old and have kids, apparently. And it, that's how it ends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I guess he's not immortal anymore. Yeah. But then that, that basically, was... like, who, what happens when he dies with, like, who has these powers now or does anyone? I don't know. And that's what I'm curious to see what they do with the sequels. Cause in my estimation at this point, there are no longer any immortals left. Right. They've all been right. killed except for the Highlander and the Highlander has lost his immortality. So he's just a dude now. So like what, <laughs> what are there? Well, like you said, this is such a good standalone movie. Like, I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, is it the same actor? Um, like what, what, what do we have? Well, what I, up? what I will so, tell you, and I know some things about <laughs> the sequels and I've read, about the next two and i what i can tell you is he does reprise his role in almost all the movies um and it ties in he even ties in with the tv show they had which is really good um so yeah it's all they tried to connect some things and maybe some hits and misses i won't give anything away but uh a lot we'll have a lot to talk about next week (laughs) cool (laughs) say that yeah um yeah that's it what what'd you think? I thought it was great. Um, I 
I, I can't believe I haven't seen this movie before. Like I know. Uh, Sean Connery. It's just such a, it's such a badass like eighties movie. Um, there's nothing else like it. There's like, nothing there's, else like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd think it would just be had, I don't know. You'd think there'd be but a lot yeah, more cops like, cats and yeah. Yeah. There's like surreal sci-fi mixed with like period piece sword fighting. Yeah. Um, there's Sean Connery in absurd costumes. Uh, great via like great visual effects and really fun cinematography. Um, Endlessly quotable lines, funny moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just, it hits it all for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. What did so, you yeah. think watching it again, Tanner? It, it held up on viewing too for you? Oh, it's great. Yeah. I, I was like the whole time I was wondering, I was like, God, if Chris doesn't like this, we're doomed. Um, <laughs> we have four more of these. I was, yeah. I was starting to get nervous. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that you, you liked it as much as I did. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it was awesome. Like I could, I could come in at any point in this movie and turn it on and be entertained and just like, you know, I think it's one of my new favorite movies that I've seen in the past. I mean, I saw it only like a year ago for the first time and it's one of my yeah. favorites that I've seen in a long time. Um, it's one of those classics that I feel like I should have watched back in like high school, you know, when I was watching oh, without all those a doubt. classic eighties yeah. movies and right there with like, I don't even know the Terminator or predator or something like that. Um, yeah. And it's, it's fun too. You know, it's a lot of like some deep questions, but it's also just a lot of fun. Um, I wonder if the main actor had been more of a bankable name, if this would also be on that same level with predator and terminator where it's like more, more, like more well-known or like more in the public zeitgeist. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody has kind of seen it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how much has been made with it but it still Mm -hmm. feels like a cult movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get into like the, the specifics here. Uh, this movie didn't perform well at the box office. Um, but it was huge on TV and in other countries, it got really famous and, uh, video rentals and stuff. It became like a huge cult classic. And so that's where super famous in Spain because of Sean Connery's Spanish accent. (laughs) I think so. Yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. So, okay. and then the, so the again, Queen music as well. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like the Queen music is kind of under the radar. Like, maybe people don't even know it's from this movie. You know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it made. Let's see. I think it only made like. Budget sixteen million. Uh, this says five million worldwide, but that's not whoa, right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's only local. I I think it said I read somewhere else like twelve million worldwide, um, which it was like a hit in France and Spain and stuff like that in some of Europe. Um, but I don't think they I were do, bringing in money back then. I do love. I'm watching your screen here, and the gross U.S. and Canada is seven hundred and twelve dollars less than the gross worldwide. So I think you're <laughs> right. Those numbers aren't quite correct. Yeah. No, yeah, in the <laughs> in the actual Wikipedia, it does say um, a different a different amount here. Um, okay, but yeah, it was the it's one of those cult classic things that then becomes uh, milk <laughs> after the fact. Um, and regardless of making a ton of money, I think the next couple sequels were okay, um, but it took five years to get a sequel made, and then it really took off. Okay. Uh, there's a TV show that ran from like 1992 to 98, looks like. Uh, so right after the second movie, and I spoil. I I started to watch some last night as I was going to bed, uh, thinking maybe I'd start watching it. And it's pretty awesome, and it does okay. tie into the the main film. That's all safe for right now. Um, but I'm gonna watch some episodes over the next couple of weeks, and we'll talk about it. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's see. I did see that there were some books, so I'll probably try and read one of those again. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a card oh, game. Cool. cool. There's an animated show. There's another TV show spinoff um, that failed. Then there's like, yeah, comics, animes, um, a video game. So 
I actually did play the tie-in video game to this today. Um, came out the same year for Commodore 64. Um, Commodore 64. Oh my! Which was just like a PC, basically, or a computer. Um, before everyone had PCs, but uh, it is rough. It is bad. It is um, <laughs> unplayable. You can only hit the space bar, and uh, yeah, I film myself doing it, or I recorded it. I'll put that on our YouTube channel. Um, it's a quick clip, but uh, yeah, basically you just duel. It's you. It's McLeod versus Ramirez, randomly um, fighting, and it's a two-player game, fighting game, but it's incredibly crude. Um, and terrible and you just hit the space bar and spoiler alert i did defeat ramirez so congratulations yes well i mean there can only be one exactly exactly (laughs) (laughs) um all right did you have any beef with this chris did you have any beef with it um what who is your mvp eh, mvp of the movie and do you have any beef Oh man, um, MVP. Man, I feel like it could be any of the three. There can only leads. be one. MVP. There can only be one. You're right. Um, man, do you have do you have one on the tip of your tongue? I'm still I'm still kind of poking between two here. Oh, you know, I said that to you. Like, I had an answer. I I don't. There's so many things. Um, yeah. Only, let's see, maybe, I'm going to just say, like, the the director. I'm going to say the director knocked it out of the park. All the choices he made, the writer and, the head writer and director, maybe as a combo. Great. Um, just yeah, I think this, this movie could be a lot shittier. This could be just yes. a super normal movie. Yeah, totally. The big swings, <laughs> the casting, the... um. The script is funny. The, it's interesting. It's original. They did a lot of interesting shots and a lot of huge swings that worked out. So I'm going to say that. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll go. I mean, I loved both uh, the Kurgan and the Highlander, but I'm going to go with Sean Connery. I just love the color yeah. that he adds to this movie. He is just such an outlandish character. Uh, while also still being just Sean Connery. He doesn't change his voice at all. He's just you know they're looking like james bond man uh but except in a flamboyant pirate outfit uh his yeah. scenes were really fun he yeah. was awesome and a, a big treat to see him in a, a kind of a goofier role like that not goofy but like you know what i mean a little bit more flamboyant and strange for sure for yeah. sure and i mean i think the director knew that they had something special with him too because they put his voiceover at the beginning and yeah. he gets the voiceover at the end like they wanted as he's much like of him on here as they could get, you know. The Obi Wan, yeah, he's the teacher. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm just looking at the poster for the movie here, and I did read that um, the director. I don't, I don't know if he fully blames this poster for it not being his success, but uh, it's just like a picture of McCloud in black and white up close, and that's it. Just as Highlander, uh, it's just really basic it's in black and white i don't know back then you know posters would be up at the movie theater you'd see it It, this isn't going to drive much interest to your movie it's Um, funny too because like it even gives away the the like the whole crux of it it says he's immortal on the poster yeah but they didn't show like the two timelines they didn't show sean connery looking like a like a crazy person it didn't advertise queen like there's so many yeah. things they could have put on that poster to like they should have, yeah put some like yeah part of a sword fight or something you know like an epic yeah out of like them fighting two swords coming together or something so you know it's like oh this is like a a crazy sword fight movie or something yeah um yeah so that's highlander um what else can we talk about is there anything else you want to talk about with this movie Oh man. Um, well, I mean, do, does it deserve a sequel? We usually ask that question yeah. at the end. Yeah. yeah. What'd you think? 
I mean, we talked about it earlier. This one seems yeah. kind of self-contained and there aren't any immortals left. So I'm curious where it's going to go. But um, as far as quality, it certainly deserves a sequel. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of ideas left, um, you know, yeah. with with immortal, you know, just kind of that idea of being immortal. Like there aren't a lot of other franchises, I think, that have really tapped into that. Um, yeah. You know, because it kind of steals the stakes. If if you can't die, like, you know, what's scary? Um but uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I think there's definitely room for, for a sequel. Yeah, definitely. I, there's so many great ideas being up here. You could even just travel back in time um, yep. and like show other battles with immortals or other big moments in his life or even further back with Kurgan or because it said. Um, Dude, I'd, I'd watch a Kurgan movie. Sean Connery was like 2000 years old or something like that. So I'd watch a Sean Connery movie. Yeah. Just, the, just these him. go way back in time, like these immortal things, you know, throughout entire history. So you could go back 2000 years and do a movie with Sean Connery or that character, at least. And um, mm-hmm. maybe they'd have to change the actor now. But, you know, keep it within this timeline because this seems to be the end of the immortal franchise. But we'll see what happens with the sequels here um, and what they Absolutely. do with it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Yeah, we will release our survey in the show notes show notes of the movie or of the podcast. So make sure to just click that link um, and, you know, give us follows and all that. If you like the show, uh, take the survey, play along. Um, even if yeah. you don't think you can write anything funny, just just fill it out and enjoy it. It's it's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. Yeah, jump in. Place, place. It's anonymous, so you can say whatever you want, and it's not like you're going to be called out if you say something silly. So, yeah, yeah. Play along. Uh, th- thanks for listening, and uh, do the survey, and we'll be back next week with uh, with Highlander Two. What's it called? Is it called Highlander Two? Highlander Two: The Quickening. Ooh, I like it. Hi- <laughs> Highlander Two on even higher land, <laughs> in the highest most land. Absolutely. We'll see you then. (laughs) Bye. Bye.